Hello and welcome to the tutorial on post processing in ANSYS Fluent. Usually the task of post processing begins after the simulation has been done. This is done to fetch some results from the data that has been collected by the simulation. After simulation the various data collected from the simulation is stored in the data file in the form of numbers. So unless you fetch those results as per your requirement, the objective of simulation still remains incomplete. So post processing plays an important role in analyzing the results that you have obtained from simulation. So I have just read the data from a simulation which has been already performed earlier. Now to begin with, I am putting the fluent window arrangement into my desired post processing format which removes the side setup tab and increases the graphics window area. So first I am displaying the geometry which has three inlets from bottom and one outlet at the top. It's basically a mixing pipe which has three inlets to insert water at different temperatures and velocities. And after mixing in the main pipe, it flows through the top outlet. Since our simulation has just got over, it's better to first check the fluxes of mass transfer from the inlet and outlet to ensure that the simulation is completely converged. So for doing this, go to report, result reports, fluxes, setup, select on mass flow rate, select all inlet and outlet boundaries, click on compute, you will see the results at the right side of the boundaries, adjacent to the boundaries in the result box. And at the bottom, the net result is the summation of all the incoming flow and outgoing flow. So as you can see, it's 7.12 e to the power minus 5. It means the difference between inflow and outflow is very less. I can assume that it is completely conversed. Similarly, I'm also checking the total heat transfer rate. And this will include the walls as well. Here the result is in watts. And the wall shows zero heat transfer because in my setup I had given walls to be adiabatic in nature. As you can see, summation of heat transfer is below 0 0.23. We can consider the result to be conversed. Now the next task is of creating few surfaces on which I can plot some qualitative results. So I am using ISO surface for creating surfaces. Here I am creating a surface from the zone fluid that is the complete domain by selecting a constant value of Z coordinate. So first I will compute to find out the extents of Z coordinates which is coming out to be minus 2 to 2. So I need a mid surface. So I am naming it Z mid and keeping the value as 0. I have created a surface named Z mid. I am displaying that surface I just created. So this is the central cross sectional surface. Now let's create a center line on the outlet. In order to do this, select outlet and again go for Z coordinate constant value 0 and name it Z midline. This is the center line at the outlet. So we will get to know how these surfaces are going to be useful in our post processing operations.
Now let's go to display and graphics and animations. Let's first plot vectors of velocity magnitude on the central cross section plane. Click on display and rotate the view to Z direction. Let's increase the vector sizing and skip few vectors to get a better view of the flow orientation. Here the color code is by velocity magnitude. So this is how the flow is oriented in the central cross sectional plane. Now let's plot contours of velocity. Again on the central plane. Keeping field option node values and global range on. So here you can see the velocity contours colored by velocity magnitude. Blue means the lowest velocity that is 0 and red means highest velocity that is 1.38. Now let's plot temperature contours. And you can see the minimum value is 293.15 and maximum value is 313.15. So using the right click tool, we can actually check the values at different places on the graphics window. So the value is visible on the bottom text window. Now let's go and plot few path lines. Again colored by velocity, release from both main inlet and side inlet. Let's first keep 10 steps. And skip few paths. Increase these steps. Skip few more paths. And to get a better look, display the geometry also. By small adjustments to step size and path skip, I am actually trying to display path lines in a better way, which will give us a better understanding of the flow inside the pipe. So these lines are colored by velocity magnitude and the lines are actually traces of the particles right from the inlet. So to get a better view, let's select the style as line arrows and adjust some settings to get the path lines with arrows. So this gives a complete idea how the mixing is taking place inside the pipe junction. So these are the qualitative post processing tools for analyzing the simulation.
now let's get into some quantitative tools which comes under plots xy plot let's plot temperature graphs along the central outline and give a line pattern to display the graph more accurately so here we see the temperature is distributed in this v shape at the center line of the outlet and also see the velocity plots wherein you can see at both boundaries velocity is zero and increasing to some extent and again decreasing at the center so to find the max and min values of the free stream velocity it's better to plot the axis also so now i'm plotting major and minor axis for y axis this will help us predicting the minimum and maximum value and the curvature So in the x axis we have position of the central outlet line and in y axis we have temperature in kelvin So using these post processing tools you can generate good quality report for the simulation you have just done Thank you